Hey, what's up guys, C-Stax here, and I'm super, super, super excited today to bring you the long-awaited Fantastic Battles box opening. You could say it's been like five years awaited uh, at this point. Uh, today is release day uh, for this box, so a uh, big shout out to uh, Upper Deck and Mark for uh, for hooking me up with uh, kind of a little bit of an advanced copy uh, so that we could get this out to you, uh, you guys quickly, because I know everybody's really, really excited for this. Um, also doing it today on my Avengers vs. Thanos mat. Uh, which also released today, so you can get that today as well. Um, but let's just go ahead and get into this because I'm literally so pumped. There's like still probably like a handful of cards in here that we haven't seen. I mean, there's always some cards usually that we haven't seen um, by the time a set drops, but this is a 200 card box. Um, so, so there's the box there. It is First Family Volume 3, uh, number 4. Fantastic Battles. Take a look at the back of the box here. The Fantastic Battles, the first giant size issue for Volume 3 versus System 2 PCG, is the first issue for the first family story arc. This super famous, super powered team of four is an exciting, long awaited addition to the versus System 2 PCG catalog of heroes and brings a wealth of power and ability to your deck. Uh, 200 all new cards, token sheet, full color rule book. Um, you can see the Baxter building there, we haven't seen that yet. Uh, there's the Fantastic R, which we haven't seen yet, awesome. Um, let's just go ahead and get into it, because I'm, like, so, so freaking excited. Alright. So, obviously it's going to come with a full rule book because it's a battle set. So we won't go over this, but you got a full Fantastic Four rule book that comes with it. Uh, token sheet, of course. Alright, are we doing villains or Fantastic Four first? Let's do the Fantastic Four first. Just seems to make the most sense, I think. Okay. So first, we have Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. Sorry, my tripod's being a little wobbly here. With Human Torch, level 1, he's a 2-4-5 health flight range. He has Flame On. Uh, main, blue, put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Human Torch. Absolutely insane. This guy gets big quick. He's got that low stat block here, 2-4-5, but 3 counters? Crazy. And then he has Pyrogenesis, level up 8 when the Human Torch gains any plus 1 plus 1 counters, he gains that many XP, that much XP. So that pot, that Flame On will give him 3 XP. Whoops. And then he turns into a level 2 Human Torch. Uh, he's still got that Flame On, he's a 6-6, six, six, and he has Nova Burst. Main, blue, put minus 1 minus 1 counters equal to the number of plus 1 counters Human Torch has, divided as you choose on any number of enemy supporting characters. Yeah, this card's really great. He's kind of a, like a reverse Thor, right? Thor puts out minus 1 counters. Human Torch gains plus one counters. Uh, it's interesting to see the same color on both powers. So that balances it a little bit because you're going to be really greedy for blues. But you could put like like build a better worlds in there, or you know. But this card seems like a really really good aggressive guy. Really good. We have Invisible Woman main character zero six flight five health. Main yellow. Each character is invisible oh it's called mass invisibility by the way each character in the invisible woman's row has invisibility this turn that's the one where they don't protect characters and they can attack protect the character wait no no it's not i'm totally wrong it's the uh, because it's you want to hide uh so it's each character in the invisible woman's row has invisibility this turn so that's the one where at the end of your turn if they're ready you hide them which is her whole thing can't believe i made that mistake there's invisible and there's invisibility in this game so it's kind of confusing sometimes and she has light bender level up six when any number of characters on your side hide invisible woman gains that many xp so you want to hide your guys and then she's a 410 uh at level two she still has mass invisibility and now she has psionic force fields any turn any combat blue or green characters in the combat can't Characters in the combat can't strike this combat. So she's got a bunch of think agains, and she can do it on any combat, not just hers. And then we have Mr. Fantastic. He's a 2-5, 6 health, uh, which is good. He's got Fantastic Four ink, build, red, search your deck for an invisible woman, human torch, or thing supporting character, reveal it, and put it into your hand. And then first family, level up 3. When each of the following characters appears on your side for the first time, Mr. Fantastic gains an XP, Invisible Woman, Human Torch, and the Thing. So he's a little bit of a slow level up, but um, I'm interested to see if there's ways to kind of cheat it uh, in this set, because I haven't seen everything yet. So at level 2, he's a 5'8", 6 health. Uh, he doesn't have that search ability anymore. Now he's got M Master Inventor, build yellow. Mr. Fantastic creates an invention. Put each copy of it from your invention pile into your hand. 
and he has impervious skin. Any turn combat green. If Mr. Fantastic gets stunned during this combat, he can't. He doesn't get wounded. So we've seen that one on uh, Luke Cage before, and it's proven to be really good on that guy. And then Master Inventor. Inventor. We'll get into inventions later, but it's this extra pile um, of cards that you can take from. Most inventors only take one copy of their invention that they're taking, but Mr. Fantastic uh, takes all copies, which is really good. But uh, again, we'll get more into inventions here in a few. We have Thing, main character, 5-3, 6 health, defender of Yancey Street, main red. Until the start of your next turn, characters on your side can't be attacked while they're being protected by Thing. And um, then he has the ever-loving blue-eyed Thing, level up 4, and the Thing is attacked, he gains an XP for each character he's protecting. So it's another one of those where it's a little bit, I mean, it's totally in, in your opponent's hands when you level up, right? Because they could just choose not to attack, um... And deny you XP, but like the objective of the game is to clear your main character, so at some point they're gonna have to. Um, they can't just do the daredevil thing where they take out your back row first before they go after your main character to deny you level up if you use this uh, first Nancy Street or uh, Yancy Street power. So it can put you, kind of put your opponent in a situation where like you're either gonna level me up or you're gonna skip your turn, which is it. So in that sense, I like it. Um, he's not definitely not as bad as daredevil. Um, and at level two, he's a 10 6 6 health. Still a defender of Yancey Street, and then he has its clobber in time. Combat green, the thing gets plus 10 and can't be stunned this combat. So, if you do level up, the thing is, like, insane. The, this, the, its clobber in time ability is absolutely, absolutely crazy. 10, it could be a 20 attack and can't be stunned. Um, absolutely incredible. And we have our first one drop here is Alicia Masters, 0, 3, 1 health, neo-realistic sculptor. Other Fantastic Four characters on your sides, on your sides, Base defense is equal to their base attack, or vice versa, whichever is higher. So your thing would be a 10-10, Invisible Woman would be a 10-10, Mr. Fantastic would be an 8-8, or like a 5-5 at level 1. This card is like, this card is really, really, really good. Whoops, I dropped poor Willie Lumpkin here. Alright, Willie Lumpkin is a 1 cost, 1-4, uh, one 1 health, delivery expert. At the start of your build phase, if Willie is in your front row... You may move him to your back row and put a package counter on him. At the start of your build phase, if Willie is in your back row with a package counter, you may move him to a Baxter building resource in your resource row. Baxter building in your resource row. Then remove him from the game if you do draw four cards. So drawing four cards is obviously good, but I, it's, it's very slow. So you have to put him out in your front row, survive a turn, move him to your back row, survive another turn, and then you can draw four cards. Um, but again, if you play this on like turn two with like Alicia Masters on turn one, he's a 4-4. Four, four which is pretty good for like something on two, for like a two drop, so yeah, not bad. We have Herbie two drop, he's a two four flight, two health, and he has safeguard characters in Herbie's row without safeguard can't be attacked. We've seen this ability a couple times, um, it doesn't, hasn't been like a super popular ability, but I think it's good, um, again, he's a four four if you start with uh, Alicia Masters, so uh, I don't think he's bad, we'll have to see what happens there. Yeah, uh, so far, it's all cards we've seen, I'm excited to get to the Oh, I don't recognize that. Okay, sorry. I'm just getting excited and looking ahead. We have Valeria Richards. Is a 2 7 1 health, a link to the negative zone. Valeria can only appear on your side if there is a negative zone, a location on your side. So, a negative zone is a special location that goes in your uh, invention pile, which we'll get to uh, here in a bit. And then she has Super Genius. At the start of your turn, draw two cards. So, this card's obviously incredible. Super big defense for a two drop, but again, you have to invent the negative zone first, bring it out of that pile into your hand, and then play it, and then play this. So I don't think she's, like, broken by any means. Uh, we have Agatha Harkness, 4-2, range, 1 health, immortal. When Agatha gets KO'd, you may shuffle her into your deck. And then Ancient Sorceress, when Agatha appears, draw a card for each Agatha Harkness who has been KO'd on your side this game. So obviously this gets better and better as the game goes on, right? Um, I think it's maybe a little too slow. Uh, she's got okay stats for a 3-drop. Um, you know, she, she might be good. This card's bonkers. Uh, we have Wyatt Wingfoot, 3 cost, 2, 6, range, 1 health. He has self-awareness. Wyatt knows he's in a card game. So the way this one kind of works, and it explains it in the rulebook if you want to go look. Um, the way this card works is like, so he has his own hand that he draws into. So after you draw for your turn, you'll also draw into Wyatt's, um, part of the hand, which is separate from your part of the hand. Um, the regular part of the hand, rather, and then you play your regular resource, and then from his hand, you can play a separate resource into a separate resource row that you can then recruit characters from. So it's kind of pseudo-ramp, but, like, you're bringing out, like, an extra one-drop, extra two-drop, whatever. Um, so I think it's kind of a, a cool way to gain uh, additional card advantage, so I think he's good. 
We have Human Torch supporting character. He's a 7-5, flight range, 1 health. He has Flame on, main, uh, this is the same one we saw from the main character, main, blue, put 3 plus one, planks, plus 1 counters on Human Torch. So on turn 4, he goes from a 7-5 to a 10-8, or if you have Alicia Masters, he goes to a 10-10 on turn 4. So that's actually, like, insane. This guy's great. Uh, we have Elijah, 4 cost, 5-3, flight range, 2 health, scroll, spy, Start of your build phase while Lyja is in your hand. You may transform an Alicia Masters supporting character on your side into Lyja. I think this card's okay. Uh, I think Alicia Masters is so good that you don't really want to do this very often, right? Um, unless you can follow it up with like another Alicia Masters. I think Human Torch is clearly the better of the two four drops. Um, and Alicia Masters is just so freaking amazing. I don't think you really want to transform all the time. All right, here's a new card I haven't seen yet. <laughs> My dog and my cat just got into a tussle. <laughs> All right, so we have five drop. Uh, I don't know this character. How do you even say that? I'm trying to get it to focus back in, too. Caledonia? I'm just going to go with Caledonia for now. Five cost, five seven, flight, two wounds, uh, sword of might, main, green. Caledonia has combat master and violent this turn. That seems good. Uh, combat master is ability we've seen a couple times. It's always been really, really good. Combat master uh, is the one where your opponent can't play plot twist this combat, and then violent is a uh, strike uh, for double against supporting characters. So that's not bad for a green. Really good powers on there. Uh, we have five cost invisible woman. She's a four ten flight one health. Where did she go? Main yellow ready invisible woman, and she has invisible or invisibility this turn. So yeah, we saw invisibility on the main character. That's the one where if she's ready at the end of your turn, uh, you can hide her, which is you turn her face down. And then Invisible, I think, is the one where she can't, she does not protect characters, but she can attack protected characters, so it's sort of like stealth. Okay, this card is insane. We have 6 cost thing, 10-6, 4 health. 4 health on this guy. It's, it's clobber in time, combat, green, the thing gets plus 10, plus 0, and can't be stunned to this combat. Then he has rock-like skin. Any turn combat green, the thing gets plus zero, plus ten this combat. That power is insane, and that power is insane. This guy is insane. He's just huge. He's either a 26 who can't be stunned this combat, or he's a 10-16, and he's got four health. Uh, I mean, if you've managed to, like, lethal this thing, like if your opponent has a thing and you manage to lethal it, obviously that feels really good, but he's potentially has 16 defense, so good luck with that. This guy's freaking awesome really good uh mr fantastic the man himself seven drop he's a seven seven two health stroke of genius at the start of your turn draw a card or mr fantastic creates an invention which we'll get to again uh, in a minute because uh, we'll, we're definitely gonna have to touch on that uh, kind of in depth and then he has plasticity main red mr fantastic has plus five plus five shrink and tough until your next turn those are all good things and he's got two health and he invents things that seems pretty good to me uh, we have Franklin Richards, which we've talked a lot about on the channel. He's a 412, 8 cost, 2 health, Omega level mutant. You can't include Omega level mutants with other names in your deck. Uh, so he's obviously, as we can see here, Fantastic Four and Omega level mutant, which is a new team affiliation that I assume we'll be seeing a lot of in the upcoming X Men related arc. And then he has Manipulate Reality, build blue, yellow, put each other character into a pocket universe until Franklin Dimension, or until Franklin Dimension, until Franklin leaves play. So basically, how that works is. You put them off to the side in their own separate part of the game, um, and then like after the, each one of your regular turns, you take a pocket universe turn. Um, characters in the pocket universe can't interact with characters out of the pocket universe and vice versa. It's like a whole thing. Go watch my video on this or go read the spoiler article if you need more information on this, but uh, he's very wonky, very cool um, design on that card. I like the flavor of it. This guy's insane. We have Uwatu the Watcher, 10 cost, 0 10, 6 health. By far the most health we've seen printed on a supporting character. He has the Watcher, main, space, look at each enemy card everywhere. So you would look at their hand, you would look at their resource row, you would look at any face down cards they have, you would look at their deck. You get to look at their deck for this. Crazy. And then he has the Doer. This one is the one. Uh, main, Earth, heal a wound from each good character on your side, then remove each minus one counter, and all burn, freeze, immobile, and infect effects from them, then recover and ready any number of them. This guy's insane. Um, is a potential that, like, he's a 10 cost, so there's a potential that, like, if Dark Phoenix comes down on 9 and deletes superpowers, that this card just does nothing, but, like, 
this card does so much heal and like ready your whole team and they're all healed from all their effects that they have on them this guy's insane super super cool um we'll have to see if uh earth and space are on the wild location for them though all right here's a card we haven't seen it's an invention so the way the invention pile works it's a separate pile the number here indicates how many copies of this card gets to go in your invention pile so i mean this says invention one but i have two copies of it Invention 1. All my Invention 1s I have two copies of. I guess because they're generic. So this is cool. So if I'm supposed to be able to play straight out of this Battles box, like say me and my bud just want to buy one Battles box and one of us plays Heroes and one plays Villains, these are generic. So I guess it's so that Heroes and Villains can have it. That's really cool of them to do that. That's cool. Because I had expected that they would just give us one copy. Um... It's a little less cool because, like, now that takes up a slot. Like, these could have been two unique cards, right? Um, as opposed to just giving you an extra copy for the other half of the deck. Or this is a mistake, and this isn't supposed to happen. <laughs> um, but I'll have to see when I... Because uh, I always buy more than one, um, and I have an extra one already. So uh, we'll have to see what happens. Um, but I think that that's just because it's generic, and you're supposed to be able to play out of the box, which uh, I kind of like. All right, so we have, this card is called Gadget. So you can only have one copy of this in your invention pile, and it has Make Things Right. Combat, if it's your turn, add an attacker to the combat. How does that work? Any turn combat, if it's an enemy turn, remove an attacker from the combat. Wow. Okay, so right off the bat, I don't really understand how this card's going to work. I'll have to read in the rule book. I'm sure it explains. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't just make this attack in the first place. Maybe, like, so, like, your opponent makes, you swing in, your opponent plays like a defensive pump and then like you can play this and add a guy to the attack make it a team attack now to kind of boost it the second one though is really good because it's kind of a think again right um that card seems cool wait hang on let me check and make sure these aren't different did i make an idiot myself i had an attacker okay no they are the same <laughs> okay uh we have machine it's an equipment with the machine keyword and it's called machine it's one cost it's uh, an invention one that has make things right when this machine appears choose one for it to gain you pay one less to recruit supporting characters insane or supporting characters on your side have plus two plus two insane holy cow that's good and it's an equipment so you can invent this on turn one with dr doom which we'll get to in a minute this card is insane oh my gosh that's awesome Wow, 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 this card's great, um, man, which one of these is better, I think maybe the ramp one, ramping is, but like, supporting here and here, they all have plus two, plus two, wow, this card's insane, that, wow, that card's great, that card's crazy, wow, okay, so we have automaton, uh, one cost, four, two, range, two health, invention one, uh, make things right when this character appears choose one for it to gain lethal or shrink uh, so very overstated for one drop but again you have to invent it first um, so that, that card seems really good though then we have a zero cost weapon equipment um, it's invention one it's generic it says make things right when this equipment appears choose one for it to gain equipped the character has plus five and range or equipped the character has plus five defense and range uh, so, yeah, so this card's good uh, good for dr doom for leveling up and all that okay let's get into this here we go the freaking fantastic car all right fantastic car is an equipment it's one cost it's invention four so you can have four copies of this uh it's fantastic four stamped obviously and then it has flying bathtub equip the character as flight okay i thought maybe it would do more um but i mean it's a one cost equipment you can have four of it um i'm sure that'll come up i mean you can do, you just get to have it in your invention pile for free um yeah, I mean, it's fine. I thought that it would do something, but, you know, whatever. This card's great, though. Uh, Unstable Molecules is an any turn combat plot twist. It's Invention 2, so you have two of it in your pile, and it has uh, any turn combat. Characters on your side can't be struck this combat. So it's Diplomatic Immunity, right? Um, it's a thick, thick again with upside, because, like, your guy can't be hit, but you can strike back, so that's really good. Um, it's especially good because, like, Mr. Fantastic's main character can grab both copies of this, whereas most inventors can only grab one copy. So that card seems great. Uh, and then we have Negative Zone, Invention 2. Oh, let's get into this. It does a little, so many things, and they're all great. Uh, gateway to the Annihilation Area. During your main phase, but not during combat, your main character may pay one of the following. Turn this location face down and space. Turn another location face down or face up. Earth, heal or wound a character. 
Blue, switch characters attack defense this turn. Uh, yellow, turn a character's minus one counters into plus one counters or vice versa. Green, ready, sorry, recover or daze a character. And red, ready or exhaust character. This thing's insane, especially I think the earth one. Um, I think it's smart that they put the healer wound on earth because that one's going to be harder to play because I don't think, I caught a glance at Baxter building and I don't think it has earth on it. So, uh, but this card seems freaking bonkers. Card's great. Yeah, so here's Baxter building. Uh, it's blue, yellow, green, or red for Fantastic Four characters. It's their special location. People were talking about, is this going to have Earth and Space on it? I was kind of hoping it wouldn't, and it doesn't, so thank God. Ooh, we got new artworks on all our locations. So we have our yellow locations. Academies. Uh, we have, ooh, Fortress. It looks like, like Hogwarts or something. Um, we have our laboratories here. I like it. And then we have our training grounds here. Ooh, I love that one. Ugh. I love that artwork. That looks great. Wow. Okay. So that's our Fantastic Four half here. Uh, yeah. I think in order, I think Invisible Woman's the best one. I think she's like a combo main character, but Human Torch is aggressive and they're both great. And then I think Mr. Fantastic and then I think Thing is probably the worst, but um, they're all playable. Uh, so that's cool. All right. Let's get into these villains. Let's get into these frightful cards got to be a number in here that we haven't seen is there like a level three doom okay no there's not i was like are they gonna blow me blow me away here all right so we have doom main character this is the guy that a bunch of people are really looking forward to i know people have wanted this in the game forever so level one doom is a two four flight range six health frightful character his inventor build yellow dr doom creates an invention so he can start inventing right away which is really really good and really important uh, and really big for his playability. And then he has Science and Sorcery. At the end of your turn, if you played an Equipment and a Plot Twist this turn, Doom gains an XP. Uh, that's it, It's a little bit of a sketchy level of condition, so we'll have to see what kind of tools he has that he can work with that make that easier for him to achieve. Obviously, we already saw that um, there's inventions in the invention pile that are going to help him. Fantastica doesn't help him, but obviously Weapon helps him. And then now we've seen Machine machine helps him a lot if i can get it to focus in um yeah this card this one cost machine equipment is really really good um it lets you bring out your doom bots early which we'll get to in a second and it facilitates your level level up condition so that card is insane for doom insane all right level two doom is a seven seven flight range he is, still has inventor and he has time platform she's an enemy supporting character uh sorry it's a blue ability its owner shuffles it face up into their deck Doom can't use his power if there are if there is a face-up character in an enemy deck. So I've talked smack about this ability because it basically is once per turn, and also shuffling cards face up into a deck is just annoying in like a tournament setting because you have to have like a judge come over and do it. Um, but we're about to get into these cards here that we haven't seen, and maybe there's something that uh, touches on face-up cards in the deck. I'm hoping that uh, we will. We have Mole Man. I love that there's a Mole Man main character in the game. He's a one six ranged, five health, frightful character. He has Mole Man. Main yellow, Mole Man tunnels under an enemy resource. Uh, subterranean tunnel network, level up three. When Mole Man tunnels, he gains an XP. So how tunneling works, let me grab like a location. So if they have a face-up location, you have to tunnel there first. So say these are my, this is my opponent's resources, right? If they have a location, you have to tunnel under there first, and you go underneath it, put it face down or whatever. Um, and then if he makes it all the way around to like your next turn, if he's under a location, you flip that location. Or, so they don't have any face-up locations, they just have face-down resources, um, you tunnel under that, and then if he makes it to the next turn, you he like tunnels out and blows up this resource, which is great. If your opponent, if you put it under their location and then they pay that location, it digs him up and he goes back to your side. Um, I think I got that all right, um, but you can check the rulebook. But, really cool. So he has to do, there's no other ways to tunnel currently, so he has to use his power to do it. Um, but yeah, so, and then at level 2... He loses the ability. No, no, he did just moved it down. So he still can tunnel. He's a 311. Insane. Uh, he still has Mole Man and he has Moloids forward. Build red. Put a Moloid token onto your side. Um, where are the Moloids? Oh man, I'm seeing spoilers. I wanted to show the Moloids with him. Well, we'll get to the Moloids when, when, when we get to them. But he brings out tokens that do things. Uh, we have Super Scroll, 2, 5, 6 health. 
He has Scroll Soldier. At the start of your turn, you may put a minus one counter on an enemy character. And then he has First Faker. Level up four. At the end of your turn, Super Scroll gains one XP for each of the following face-up characters. Human Torch, Invisible Woman, Mr. Fantastic, and the thing. So it's another kind of slow level up. Obviously, you, you don't want to play those guys in your deck. Um, and then if you play against like a Fantastic Four main character, then you're guaranteed to level up, which is good. A little slow, but I love his level two. It's so cool. He's a 6-6 six, six flight. He has Cosmic Energy Power Receptors, Super Scroll. When Super Scroll levels up, he gains the keyword and superpowers he doesn't already have from the following face-up characters. Human Torch, Invisible Woman, Mr. Fantastic, and The Thing. When Human Torch, Invisible Woman, Mr. Fantastic, or The Thing appears, Super Scroll gains the keyword superpowers he doesn't already have from them. It's so, like, I don't know how, like, competitive or great this card is, but I love. I just love the flavor on it. He's just going to be stealing Fantastic Four powers left and right. You could have Clobber in time. You could have... You could make him invisible. Like, oh my gosh, there's so many cool things you can do with this. I love the design of this card. And his, the artwork's pretty killer, too. Yeah, I, I really like the Super Scroll main character. I think he's, like, he's maybe the least playable of the Frightful Bunch. Especially, like, we're going to take a look at Wizard here in a second. But I think he might be, like, he might be the coolest. I like that card. This card, this is insane. This is the best Frightful main character. Uh, he's a 3-3 flight range, 6 health. Uh, he has Wizard armor. While the Wizard is in combat, you may play any plot twist as a copy of an open fire fine cover savage surprise or best offense is a good defense plot twist those are the original four basic um locate your basic plot twists it's the plus three defense one is fine cover open fire is plus two attack um best offense is a good defense is plus five defense on your guy and then what was the other one um savage surprise is plus four when defending um so that's those are all good cards to be able to play for free i mean not for free but like to have infinite number of copies of technically more than the max number of copies of. Make sure I get my wording right. Then he's Mechanical Mastermind, level up 5. When you play a combat plot twist, the wizard gains an XP. So obviously you're going to be playing combat plot twist. Um, so you're going to get that level up. You have to burn through a lot of cards to get it though, playing plot twist and stuff. But like, I imagine like you're playing this with like leader um, from Underworld and then you're just loading up on more plot twists. I think this card's absolutely insane. Like this doesn't say once per turn or once per combat or anything. This card is insane. Absolutely great. Then at level 2, he just gets even better. <laughs> He's a 7-5. He still has wizard armor at level 2. I can't believe that doesn't say once per turn or anything. Then he has escape artist. Any turn combat, yellow or red, cancel the combat. The wizard may use his power any number of times per turn. So already he can play any number of defensive plot twists. You can turn any plot twist you want into fine cover. And then also he's got cancels that he can use any number of times per turn. Oh my god, this, this card's insane. This is the best of the bunch, in my opinion. This card is so, so, so good. Alright, this is a card I haven't seen. Here we go. We have Mole Man. He's a 2 cost. Sorry, 1 cost, 2-2, two, two, range, 1 health. Moloids forward, build, red, put a Moloid token on your side. So even the supporting character brings out those Moloids that we'll have to look at in a minute. And then he has Lesser Radar Sense. Main, yellow. Enemy players must play with their hands revealed until Moloid leaves play. Wow! I didn't think that we would see something from Daredevil on here. Oh man, that's interesting. Wow. Uh, we have Mad Thinker, 1-6, one, 1 health, 1 cost, or sorry, 2 cost. Oh my gosh, I keep messing everything up. He has Construct Android, Build Red, Search your deck for an awesome Android supporting character reveal and put it into your hand. And he has Computer's Mind, Main Yellow, make a prediction about an enemy, attack next turn. If the prediction is correct, reveal it, cancel the combat immediately, and immediately make another prediction for an attack that turn. So, like, that would involve you, like, having to, like, write something, like, like, write it down on a piece of paper, right, so that... You can secretly do it, and then there's, like, a way to keep you honest. Um, let's pull out... Yeah, let's just skip to Mad Android, because this is the card that he searches for. So this is the guy that you're grabbing with Mad Thinker. He's awesome Android. He's three cost. He doesn't have... He's got Star Star for his stats there, and his Mimicry. Awesome Android has base attack and defense equal to the highest printed attack and defense values on other face-up characters. The attack and defense can be from different characters, so he's always going to be the biggest. That's that card's cool. I think these are the Moloids, too, that are all around him. All right, we have Puppet Master. I like the classic 60s artwork on Puppet Master. He's a 2 cost, 2 5, 1 health, radioactive clay effigy, main red, reveal a supporting character from your hand, then move an enemy supporting character with that name onto your side. Uh, when Puppet Master leaves play, move back to the deck. I, eh. So, like, you have to have the character, and the opponent has to have the same character. So, like, this is kind of tough. I could see it with, like, staple characters um, in the format, like, take their Jessica Jones or something. Um, but it's, it's like, a lot of specific things I have to line up for that to work, right? Uh, let's take a look at Diablo. 4-4, 1 health, Master Alchemist. 
main Diablo pays any two, uh, yellow, green, blue, or red. Choose a supporting character on your side to gain the following based on what he paid. So this card's so cool. Um, I don't know how good it is, but it's really cool. So air is yellow, gives it flight. Earth is green, gives it plus five attack. Fire is blue, gives it range. And water is red, gives it plus five defense. So that card's really cool. Um, have we never seen this like he pays any two? I've never seen that on a guy before. Um, this guy's insane. If if like if it lines up perfectly for you, this guy is freaking bonkersly powerful. We have Blastar, four cost, five five flight range, two health. Um, so he's a five five on four with two health is pretty good. But then he has King of Balur. Blastar has plus five plus five while on negative zone location is on your side. So he would be a ten ten flight range, two health. Again though, like you have to invent negative zone and then play negative zone and then have Blastar. Um, so I, I don't think it's like broken, but he's a big boy. Okay, this is the thing that makes Doom great, right? So okay, here you have Doombot's supporting character. Uh, it's an invention. So he's a seven-seven flight range, two health. Obviously super big for a four drop, but again you have to invent it. You have four of this in your invention pile. He has swarms. You can have any number. And then he has an exact replica. If Doctor Doom would be wounded on your side, randomly choose him or a Doombot on your side. If you choose a Doombot, you may say, Fool! You think you can defeat Dr. Doom so easily? If you do, switch their positions and wound Doombot instead. So, he's huge for a 4 cost. He takes wounds from your main character. This guy is what makes Doom potentially be great. So, we'll have to see. Oh, I don't think we've seen this card. We have 4 cost Thundra. 6-2, two, 2 health. Leap, so flight on your turn. And bulletproof. Characters with range can't strike Thundra, even in uh melee combat so those are both good abilities especially bulletproof two health really low defense but i mean she can't be range attacked so uh that's not bad we have christoph vernard he is flight range flight health <laughs> flight health four seven flight range two health uh becoming doom while a doom body is on your side christoph gains aka dr dream and swarm so you can so he would be considered doom and but you can still have him which is uh and with doom you can have them both uh, and then he has Air Parent, main yellow, put five plus on counters on a Doombot on your side, or ready a Doombot on your side, or put a Doombot from your KO pile into your hand. Kristoff may use this power any number of times per turn. So, like, I, I, I've talked about how I think, like, Doom is kind of dry and boring, but, like, Doombots and Kristoff are what's going to, like, push him over the edge, right? I, I think the fact that you can do this any number of times per turn, make your Doombots huge, ready your Doombots... Uh, and then like your doombots can save this or your doombots can save your doom um i definitely think doom is very very playable and like the doombots and Kristoff are what like really push him Ooh, okay we're going into the wizard now we haven't seen this guy we have the wizard supporting character five cost six eight flight range one health escape artist any turn combat yellow or red cancel the combat the wizard keys power and i'm trying to figure out. okay so it's just the, his cancel ability from his main character that's okay uh, this card is great for Doom. Doom loves this. We have Impossible Man, 6 cost, 6-6, six, six, flight, 1 health. Uh, Impossible Man can be played as a frightful equipment with cost 1 or a frightful plot twist instead of as a supporting character. If it's an equipment, it gives plus 2, plus 2. If it's a plot twist, it's any turn combat, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on a character on your side. So, like, mostly I think this card is, like, really, really great for Doom because he's a 1 cost equipment, right? So, like, you put it on your Doom and he's, like, plus 2, plus 2 and... Uh, I just think the one cost equipment part is like really really crucial for doom we have six cost molecule man five nine range two health molecular manipulation main blue or discard an unstable molecules plot twist that's the uh, fantastic core invention that can't be says can't be struck choose one matter to energy ko another supporting character on your side put plus one plus one counters equal to its cost on a supporting character on your side and then energy to matter remove any number of plus one plus one counters from a character on your side you may put a character with cost equal to the number of counters, equal to the number of, you know, plus one counters you removed uh, from your KO pod on your side. I think the second one is really cool in, like, um, uh, like Human Torch or something. Um, and I think um, there's, like, probably some cool combo enabling things you can do with this. So that's cool. All right, we're in, like, the home stretch here. So here's Dr. Doom's supporting character, which I think this card's great. He's a 7-7 seven, seven flight range, 2 health. He has Inventor, so build yellow. Dr. Doom creates an invention. Obviously, that's good. And he's, all you need is Doom. When you play an equipment, put three plus one counters on Doom. He goes to 10-10. When you play a plot twist, ready Doom. So he can swing multiple times. He can get huge. He's got two health. This card seems really, really great, especially in, like, Wizard. Um, 
where like you're playing a bunch of plot twists and those like this guy can like swing a bunch. Um, Super Scroll supporting character we've seen. He's a seven cost six six two health. He has Super Scroll engineering. At the start of your main phase, choose one. Put three plus one counters on Super Scroll. Super Scroll gets plus ten attack and can't be stunned. Uh, you might be noticing a pattern here. Uh, Super Scroll. Oh my gosh. Super Scroll can attack protect the characters this turn. Super Scroll has shrink and tough until your next turn. So those are all Fantastic Four related abilities. So at the start of your main phase, you pick one of those for him to be able to do this turn, and then he has push the limits, main red, choose another effect from Super Scroll Engineering. So he gets one of those Fantastic Four effects every turn, and then you can pay a red to give him another one. I think that card's super cool. Alright, we're almost through here. We have 8 cost Mephisto. He is a 7-12, 3 health, bond with Zarathos. That's the demon who possesses a Ghost Rider, if you don't know. He has build blue, KO another sporting character on your side, and put a Ghost Rider sporting character from hand on your side, so that's cool and very flavorful. And he has deal with the devil, build yellow, offer a deal to an enemy player. So how the deal works is there has to be two elements to it. So, and then you offer it to a deal, and it, you offer your deal to, to the opponent. It's a one-time thing. It's a yes or a no, and it, then it resolves right away. So, like, you could say, like, I'll, I'll, so I'll offer you a deal. I get to draw five cards, but you get to draw ten cards. So it's really, really flavorful with, like, the making a deal with the devil thing. I think... That it's not competitively viable. I think this ability actually realistically says build yellow, do nothing. Because your opponent's always going to say no, like in a competitive environment, right? Like, if I'm playing at Gen Con, like for like big time stakes, like I don't really care what the deal is, like how sweet it sounds for me. Because, like, if my opponent's playing Mephisto and they're trying to get me to take this deal, they have more information than me. Clearly, I'm getting screwed in that deal in some way. So. I think the flavor on it is top notch. I absolutely love this card, honestly. The artwork is killer too. Like uh, he just looks so creepy, and the flavor on it with the whole deal with the devil thing is like top notch. Uh, I like it a lot, but I don't think I'm playing it at Gen Con. You know, I'm not. I'm not insane, but I love the flavor on it. Okay, we have backup plan. Frightful any turn combat plot twist. It says any turn combat. If an enemy player has played a plot twist, this combat draw two cards. Uh, it requires your opponent to do a thing to get the value out of it, which is meh. But I love drawing cards. Uh, I think you play this. I think you do. Um, I think it's good for Doom. Obviously, it's good for um, Wizard because, like, if it doesn't fire off the way you want, it can be any other plot twist for Wizard, any of the four that he can turn into. Um, but I think it's really good. I think the drawing cards thing is good. Uh, we have Observe and Adapt. It is a frightful plot twist. It says you may play this as a copy of any plot twist in enemy KO pile. Uh, this loses the enemy plot twist team affiliation. So, like, again, it's another thing that requires your opponent to, like, do a thing for it to get the value. I think this is mostly good in, again, Wizard, because, like, you can do this, or it can be any other plot twist. Other than that, it's really situational, right? And then we have, here's our Moloids, finally. They are zero ones, one health with Swarm, and they have Dark Vision. While attacking, the Moloid has plus one attack for each face-down resource on that side. So that would be the side that he's attacking, right? So this could potentially be it could potentially get out of hand um but i think the the hiding away thing is the main draw for uh, uh what's it called uh Mulan, right oh i love this wild location look at the artwork on this thing so it's latveria which obviously is the country that dr doom is the ruler of and it's blue or yellow or green or red for a frightful character i love the artwork on that wow that's so killer i like that a lot let's see if we have any alternate now it looks like they're all the same so we have our doom Academies are I'm gonna call this the Hogwarts location. And then we have our blues and we have our yellows, which or our sorry, our reds. I love the artwork on the reds. So that's the Fantastic Four battles. Um or sorry, the Fantastic Battles. Been waiting on this for so long. Um I think it's a freaking home run. I I just love the artwork on this Latveria location. Um but yeah. So excited to get to play with these cards. Uh finally have Doctor Doom in the game. I think Doctor Doom's supporting character is great. Wizard is awesome. The Doom bots combined with Kristoff make uh, the main character Doom insane. Doom bots are super, super pushed. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I went ahead and ranked the Fantastic Four guys, right? So let's rank these guys. So I think Wizard is the best. I think Super Scroll is obviously the, the least viable, but I think he's actually probably the coolest one. I think it goes Wizard, Mole Man, then Doom. I, the, mm, the two spot to me is kind of interchangeable, right? But I think Wizard is definitely the best. Um, but yeah, I'm just so excited to get to play with these cards. Um, finally have Fantastic Four in the game. Uh, maybe keep your eyes peeled on the Upper Deck Twitch channel later today for something 
cool uh, regarding the Fantastic Four stuff. Super excited to play with these guys. Uh, and then, like, we got this awesome 200-card set, and then, like, we're heading right into Herald spoilers after this, and then after that we have Frightful, and it's just a super exciting time for Versus, even though we're all stuck at home. So, anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Fantastic Battles down below. What's your favorite main character? What's your favorite invention? How about that? Um, yeah, so uh, I'm just really excited to play for the Fantastic Four cards, and I'm rambling now, so I'll go ahead and uh, leave it at that, and uh, we'll catch you guys later.